Hello, hello, my Panda Pals, and welcome back to the channel. Today we are recapping what happened on Season 1, Episode 3 of The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So, buckle it up, and let's go for a ride. Whitney and Macy are hanging out at Michaela's place and they're like, oh my god, we cannot believe you did not tell any of us that you weren't going to be at the baby shower. Everyone's like, where's Whitney? Where is she? It didn't even cross my mind to text her. Like, I just like, I genuinely didn't think it was going to be a big deal. And Michaela tells us that Whitney is a pretty calculated bitch. And she knows she didn't go to that baby shower because she wanted the attention to be on her because she knew that if she did not go, she would be the talk of the town. She thinks you're friends, so that's why she's confused. Well, then you don't know the definition of friends. Jen and her hubby Zach are living the dream. Jen is a busy girl this week. Zach just graduated from BYU, so she's throwing him a little graduation party. Then she's got Demi's Galentine's birthday bash, and then they've got their baby's blessing, which is basically a little ceremony where you sprinkle a little extra Mormon magic on him and ask God to make him healthy and like 20% cooler. Enter the mom talk girlies, and yes, this means that Whitney and Taylor are going to be breathing in the same air. You remember Whitney, right? Taylor's friend who was like, oh honey, if you were drowning, I would throw you an anchor. This is the first time I'll be seeing Whitney since she didn't show up to my baby shower. I feel like I'm comfortable with it. Everyone gathers in the kitchen. They meet Ethan the soda jerker. And yes, that is really his job title. Now, Mormons aren't allowed to drink alcohol or caffeine, so when the devout get down, they party hard with a cold stiff bottle of pop. Soda is the Mormon version of coffee. You see people in the drive-thru getting soda at like eight in the morning. Speaking of which, I recently saw a clip of Macy and Taylor concocting their drink of choice, which is called a dirty soda. So that is essentially creamer with a splash of Diet Pepsi. And I don't want to say that that sounds gross, but that sounds gross. But I am super curious to try it. I just can't because my relationship with lactose is no bueno. So that experiment would end very badly for me and my butthole. Jen's parents, Maria and Rick, join the party, and Jen tells us that she has on a few occasions felt incredibly judged by Zach's family in the past because her family is poor. My mom is a cleaning lady in the same hospital that Zach's dad is a heart surgeon. Everyone sits down for dinner and Macy tells us, listen, I hate Dakota, but I'm gonna play nice. Which on one hand, it's always a little icky to see people acting super fake, but I do understand that she's doing this so she can support Taylor because Girlie really doesn't have a lot of friends in her corner right now. Are we best friends? Yeah, we just became best friends. It's pretty clear I don't like Dakota, and I don't know why, it just kind of gives me the ick a little bit. Demi asks who at the table drinks alcohol, and everyone just looks at Layla, and she's like, oh my god, no, I don't constantly black out anymore, that is all in my past. I want to be a better example for my boys. So she's yeah. only going to have Layla? So I'm only going to have like three drinks. <laughs> Whitney is not amused with this joke, and she tells us that there are two types of Mormons, the good ones and the bad ones. Ooh, you are not in the group that you think you are. I have values and standards and others who drink alcohol once in a while. Taylor and Dakota head home early cause everyone's about to jump into the hot tub and she doesn't want to do that right now. She tries to give Whitney a goodbye hug and it's one of those awkward side hugs where one person clearly does not want to touch the other person. I'd love to see you. Yeah. So there's no like, you know, back up, Macy. Any elephants okay. in the room? Oh my God, these girls in drama like moth to a flame. Look at Demi's face. She's like, oh my God, do I have to grab my popcorn? Where's my phone? Where's my phone? Anything you want to talk about? I'd like to, in person. Okay. okay. She has nothing to say. That's the vibe I'm getting. Taylor leaves and Whitney is like, OMG, I do not want to have any kind of conversation with that bitch. And Macy's like, listen, I know you don't owe her anything, but maybe you should just tell her how you feel so she knows. And Whitney is like, mm, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. Remember all those times I was super vulnerable and Taylor was like, oh, look at me, guys. Look at me, I'm dancing crazy. Connor, he had been struggling with a porn addiction. Yeah, I've been pregnant for like, I would say four weeks. I'm pretty sure I miscarried. I don't fault Whitney for not wanting to interact with Taylor anymore. If somebody hurts you over and over again and you decide to cut them off, I don't think you owe them any kind of explanation. I don't think you owe them any kind of closure. However, I do feel like Whitney is hoping for Taylor's downfall. You know that quote from Tupac where he's like, just cause we're not friends doesn't mean we're enemies. I still want you to eat, just not at my table. Yeah, Whitney does 
not want Taylor to eat. She wants Taylor to be living in a cardboard box, dumpster diving for sustenance. Everyone heads out to the hot tub and Jordan, who is Jesse's husband, brings out a flask and he's like, I know y'all just said that you do not drink, but does anybody want a drink? Really? There's literal scripture of not drinking alcohol. It's a belief that Jesse and Jordan know. Now you're being rude. Surprising absolutely no one, everyone declines that offer and Jordan calls them a bunch of losers. You guys are all boring. How about you two? I'm gonna pass. <laughs> Sure. Okay. I thought it was a graduation party. Jordan, you are at a BYU graduation at a dry household. Let's try to be smart sometimes, okay? I know we're on different terms, but I at least thought we were on the same level of understanding and respect for each other. Zach comes out, joins in the shenanigans, and Demi is like, okay, everybody, put your hands up, because it is time for Never Have I Ever, the Mormon edition. So wait a minute, yeah, if we're gonna play this game, we should probably have a drink first, so. <laughs> oh my God, this guy is so f***ing annoying. Quick story time, I used to date this guy, let's call him Steve, and he had a best friend, let's call him DB for douchebag. He was such a douchebag. I met him for the first time at his housewarming party and he was like, hey, welcome, can I get you something to drink? And I was like, oh my God, you're so nice. Uh, I'll just take a water. And he was like, oh, actually, we don't have any water in this house, so you are going to have to pick an alcoholic beverage. And I was like, LOL, you're so funny, but I actually really don't drink any alcohol, so water is really fine. And he was like, okay, okay, so what I'm hearing is you want a beer. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, I'm actually sober. And he's like, oh, okay, you're sober. I get it, let me get you that water. And I was like, okay, great. Thank God he finally got the picture. He comes back and he hands me a fucking cocktail. And he's like, here's your water. So yeah, I fucking hated that guy. Jen is stressing out because this isn't her house. It's Zach's parents' house. And they're very much a super Mormon kind of family that already hates the fact that she is associated with mom talk and its unsavory image. Jesse drinking is disrespectful and it almost feels like she's spitting in my face. It's a new day and Whitney, Macy, Jen, and Michaela are at a med spa getting some Botox. I would low key never get laughing gas for Botox, but I'll do it today just for fun. Why not? Why not? Why like, am I not gonna get high for free? Like, what it's not against mean? the rules. Whitney is like, we are good Mormons. We do not smoke, we do not drink, but when we get Botox, we get high as a fuck. Sorry, but I feel like I'm gonna fall asleep. <laughs> You guys, it's already hitting me. My arms are like, Wait. don't you feel good? <laughs> and I know what you're thinking. Um, excuse me, Mormon mommies, but Botox is a drug and laughing gas is a drug. And yes, that is all true. But Macy tells us that despite being taught in the Mormon religion that your body's a temple and you should only put things in it that are good and pure, they don't seem to care so much about it if it means that the women are gonna have less wrinkles and bigger lips. It's actually surprising that they don't really care, as far as I know, about like plastic surgery. So everyone be getting Botox and lip filler here. Jen invites the group to her son's upcoming baby blessing, but she is conflicted about inviting Jesse and Jordan, especially after the whole flask incident. So I are you going to invite them then or no? I mean, what would you do? Like, would you invite Taylor? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. Oh, yeah. So Jen doesn't want to cause any more drama, but she also doesn't want Jesse and Jordan there. And she also kind of feels bad about hurting anyone's feelings. And Whitney is like, girl, f them. Don't feel bad. And Michaela doesn't really love this response. She says that Whitney is the current leader of Mom Talk, and she really feels like she needs to get all of her priorities straight. She should try and bring us all closer together instead of encouraging Jen to not invite the other four girls. Four girls? Wait, so Jen doesn't want to invite Taylor and Jesse, but also Layla and Demi? Damn. We head on over to Jiz Salon with Demi, and she tells Jesse that she doesn't think she's invited to the baby blessing anymore. I was talking to Macy and I was like, should I wear this to the baby blessing? And she's like, um, are you invited <gasps> to that? Oh. And Jesse's like, OMG, I haven't gotten a formal invitation to that thing either. So does that mean I was uninvited too? She tells us that this feels straight out of Mean Girls, like Whitney, Michaela, and Macy are the plastics, Jen is their Katie Heron going through her trial period, and it's very clear that they are exiling Demi, Jesse, Taylor, and Layla. So yeah, the group has definitely been divided into the Sinners and the Saints. 
So Demi calls Jen up and she is like, hey, so I heard we are invited to your baby blessing. So I just wanted to make sure that you don't like hate us. And Jen is like, no, oh my God, of course I don't hate you. It's just that Zach just didn't want me to invite a bunch of people that he also wasn't super close with, you know? I guess for me though, like you've expressed to me that like you feel like me and you were the closest out of all the girls. And then things get a little bit awkward and Jen kind of has to come clean. And she says that Zach didn't want people to be at the baby blessing that weren't as devout in their faith and that she agrees with him. I just feel like I'm in a really tough situation. I don't know why I'm going to start crying right now. Please, Zach, will you just clarify what's going on? Sure. So Zach takes the phone and tells them that he has zero issues with them and their partners, but he's just not super close with them. And Jen is like, yeah, see, he just doesn't feel like he's super close to you guys. That's all. I mean, it's their baby blessing, so they can kind of invite whoever the hell they want. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that they want to be a little bit more selective with their baby blessing, and they would prefer to just have people who are strong in their faith. I just wish that she would have been upfront and honest about it with her friends. I think it could have been solved with communication, though, is what we're saying. 100%. Okay, well, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope that the day is beautiful and sacred. Jesse's like, dude, this is bullshit. And Demi's like, I mean, I get why you were uninvited. Zach was upset with how sh** your husband was. You guys come as a couple. Yeah, but then why you? It makes me question if we're not invited because we're not good enough Mormons. It's a new day and Demi is getting ready for her Galentine's Day birthday party that she is hosting. She's inviting her close family and friends of the female variety. And yes, that does include every member of Mom Talk. I believe in including everyone and I don't want anyone to feel alone or left out or left behind. Whitney is with Macy and Michaela and they're getting ready for Demi's party, which apparently includes mocking and making fun of her. <laughs> On Demi. Okay, do it. Look at my outfit. It's so beautiful. <laughs> what? Then Macy's like, oh my God, guys, did you know that Demi thinks she is a nine out of 10 on the Mormon scale? I was like, if you're a nine, then I'm probably a 12. You guys don't actually think that she's a nine? <laughs> Definitely not after the fruity cereal incident. What fruity cereal <laughs> incident? So Whitney goes on to whisper what happened in Michaela's ears, and Michaela's like, I don't even know what any of that means. So Whitney has Macy lay on the ground so she can show Michaela the art of crushing someone's face in between her thighs. What does it have to do with fruity cereal? The fruity cereal has to do with taste. So I'm gonna assume that he ate her out, but where the fuck was the cereal? Cause if the cereal was up her snatch, then I really don't think you should be putting that up there. And if it was in his mouth, then cereal scrapes the roof of your mouth. I don't really want that scraping across my kitty meow meow. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. I, <laughs> I thought when they said fruity cereal, I was thinking like, Fruit Loops, but they probably meant like Fruity Pebbles because Fruity Pebbles gets really soft in your mouth really quickly. So yeah, that would make a lot more sense. <sighs> Great. I am so glad I took the time to really think that one out. I cannot believe that this is my job. Also, how does that make her a bad Mormon? Whitney goes out and fetches the gift that she got for Demi, and it's literally just a box that she is going to fill with Fruity Cereal. Stop it right now. <laughs> It was cold. What a horrible idea. I don't know how Demi will take it. I'm sure she won't think it was funny. I love, and by love I mean hate, how Whitney is like, I am such a good and benevolent Mormon, and then immediately starts wrapping such a mean-spirited gift. Also, who cares if Demi's husband ate cereal out of her hoo-ha? Your husband was sending his ding -a -ling to a countless number of random women on the internet throughout your entire marriage. I really don't think you should be throwing stones. Everyone gets to the house and while they're waiting for Demi to finish getting ready, Macy's like, so I guess I'm gonna see you girlies at the baby blessing tomorrow, right? Oh, no. No, right? Um, Macy. <laughs> Macy. I forgot. No, I haven't Macy. talked to I'm Layla. Sorry, I, okay, this is Holy crap. Now, do I think that Macy could have genuinely forgotten that Jen uninvited these people? Absolutely. Do I think that's what happened? Absolutely not. That aside, the baby blessing is tomorrow and Jen still has not told Taylor or Layla that they have been uninvited. Girly, come on. Jen explains the same exact thing she said the other day. It's not you. It's also not me. It's all Zach. 
The only Not three people like, that are coming are Macy, Michaela, and Whitney, it's because Zach knows. It's because we're the sinners. Mm -hmm. Taylor is like, that is super hypocritical and definitely does not align with what the Mormon religion teaches us, but cool, two can definitely play this game. And she tells everybody at the table that the guest list for her baby blessing just got a whole lot shorter too. My baby blessing's coming up soon too, and you and you can come. <laughs> Demi finally comes down and she thanks everyone for coming and says that she wants tonight to be all about positivity and celebrating in their feminine power together. And she looks at all of them and she's like, you are my people for real, for real. Whitney comes up and she's like, ooh, Demi, I got a gift just for you. You should open it. Wait, this is really thoughtful. Oh, <laughs> shut up. It's fine. It's fine, Wit. It's no big deal. It was, in fact, a very big deal. Demi is super upset. One, because she had been very clear that tonight's party was not supposed to be trashy. It was supposed to be lovey and supportive of each other. And two, this intimate story that she shared was absolutely off limits and the girls swore to each other that it would never leave the room in which it was originally uttered. She mad at you. No, she pissed. That was fucking weird. Seriously, like what's, oh, yes. it's a galantine. Like what the Oh my God. Whitney is the villain. We all thought it was going to be Taylor, but it's actually f***ing Whitney. She is not a grade A Mormon. She is a grade A asshole. It is very hypocritical because she wants to create this safe space with mom talk. I want us to be loyal to each other and feel safe with each other. And Yeah, safe space for her. That is a very important distinction. So Whitney is like, it was an inside joke. What is the big deal? No, honey, it was something that you did specifically to embarrass her. But let's just all take a little trip to the land of delusion and pretend like Winnie had zero negative intentions with giving Demi this gift. She thought that Demi was gonna laugh it up and they were all gonna be happy. Clearly, that is not what happened. Demi got really upset. So if Winnie was a good, uh, not even a good Mormon, if she was a good friend or a good person, she would have gone to Demi and been like, oh my God, I thought this was gonna be a funny joke, but I clearly missed the mark. I am so sorry for hurting your feelings, right? Right? But she's not a good friend. So what does she say? That fucking <laughs> pissed me off. So Demi is upset about the gift. And then Whitney is upset that Demi is upset at her. That's right, folks. She's mad that her mean-spirited gift was taken very poorly. Macy goes to Demi and she's like, yeah, so FYI, Whitney's in there mad that you're mad. And Demi's like, what the fuck? So she goes to Whitney and she's like, girl, what is your damage? And Whitney is like, I'm just so upset at the situation. Why are you mad at me? I'm mad about this whole situation. That's fair, but okay. it, sounds, it feels like it's very targeted towards me. I just felt ambushed. You felt ambushed? Why? Because you pulled a mean prank and the people around you were like, whoa, that was a mean prank. That's not called an ambush. That is called telling you the truth. Hope this helps. This isn't entirely surprising because I do feel like oftentimes Whitney will make things about herself so toxic. It is baby blessing day and the uninvited sinners are breaking the Sabbath by going on a little bowling date with each other. We were all kicked out of the baby blessing because we are not Mormon enough for Jen. Meanwhile, Jen and Zach welcome all of the people who they didn't uninvite and a group of the men circle around the baby to perform the blessing. The reason why women don't give this blessing is because only men carry the priesthood in the church. I don't love that the women are allowed to be in that circle offering their blessings to the baby because uh, I don't really see how it's only valid if you have a penis. But I guess at least they're allowed in the room to offer prayer and just general good vibes. I feel bad not inviting the other girls, but I'm actually grateful I did it because yeah. I feel like everything wouldn't have been as like, be sacred and special. They ask Macy if she's invited all of Mom Talk to her upcoming birthday trip, and she says yes, and sure, it's gonna be a little awkward because there's clearly some infighting going on, but she booked a sweet penthouse and it's gonna be awesome! Back at the bowling alley, Jessie is like, the upcoming girls trip is gonna be hella awkward cause there are problems between Whitney and Taylor and Whitney and Demi. Gee, if only we could figure out what the common denominator was. It's me. There are a lot of things that need to be said. And when we're in a house together for two days, I know it's gonna come out. There's probably going to be drama. I definitely can't wait to see it. Anyway, that is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this one.
I'm a little shocked because the first two episodes led me to believe that this show was just going to be a documentation of Taylor's downfall, but it's actually looking like it is a documentation of Whitney's villain arc. Like, girl is the absolute worst right now, just being the biggest pick me. And I mean, you're 30. I feel like you're way too old to be doing this shit. I hope you enjoyed this one. Please let me know down in the comments below what you thought, especially regarding the gift Whitney gave Demi. Like, do you think that was mean spirited or do you think Demi just can't take a joke? Anyway, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Give this video a huge like. And if you want to go a little extra with supporting this channel, go ahead and click that video that YouTube recommends that you watch at the end of this video. That essentially lets the algorithm know that you are interested in watching more and makes them think, oh, maybe other people would like to watch this more too. I would super appreciate that. And that would really help with the continued growth of this channel. With that said, I hope to see you guys for the next one. And as always, thanks for not letting me ride this train wreck alone. Bye.